Hi everyone, I want to talk you through the titration of acids and bases uh, experiment. Good news, um, if you've uh, successfully completed the last one, the HCl titration with KHP, this is ex extremely similar. Okay, so uh, essentially the first part is just the same, uh, standardization of NaOH using KHP, so I'd urge you, you know, I'm not going to talk about that too much. If you want to kind of refresh that, go back to the last pre-lab and look at the, the first part when we talked about standardizing sodium hydroxide with KHP. And then, let me just give you a checklist here. So part A, standardization NaOH. In other words, fine concentration NaOH. Okay, and I'll talk you through the data sheet in a moment, maybe use some uh, actual data. Okay, so just like the previous experiment, we're going to find the actual concentration of sodium hydroxide using a KHP standard. It's a one-to-one -one titration, if you recall that. And in part B, it's a little bit different because we have an unknown acid, right, which is actually KHP. Now, here's the thing. If I draw you a little picture, right, in the lab, I would assign you a little container and some fraction by weight of this is KHP, and some fraction is something else. Maybe it's sodium chloride or something, right? Okay. Maybe it's five grams of this and five grams of this. That means it'd be 50% by weight. Your job is to find the percent KHP in there, right? So you can use your sodium hydroxide from part one, bring it to part two, do a titration, and you can find out how much mass of KHP is in a certain mass of mixture. Do the Dr. Phil thing, if you remember that, the part over the whole time is 100 for a percent. Okay, so hopefully that's uh, a nice overview for you. Okay, now this is gonna be due by the end of Tuesday. Okay, I've got two labs this week, so I wanna keep on pace, which is the 30th. Okay, all right, as I do this, it's Monday morning. All right, <laughs> so, all right, now, so let's look at it. So. I am actually going to, oh, I'll write it down too, okay. There's a bunch of different unknowns. Okay, I'm going to send you this experiment by email today. So look in your email, Monday, probably lunchtime time, it will arrive, okay. So um, you got until the end of Tuesday to finish it. All right, so this is what you'll get in the mail, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah, feel free to read through, okay talks about stuff we've literally already done, okay, so if you want to review that, that's fine. Okay, but what I want to talk about is the data sheet. Okay, now what you're going to get, and everyone's going to get a different one, you're going to get a data sheet like this, and remember in the first part, if I draw a little picture for you, okay, remember how this went. You had the flask with the KHP and the burette with the sodium hydroxide. Okay, and then you titrate until it changed color. So that should be familiar. Bad drawing, I know, right? Okay, so this tells you the mass of KHP in the flask. So we got point, you know, your number will be different. Use your number. Okay. The beginning and final volume from the burette. Okay, initial, final, and then the difference is what you add, right? Okay, and then just like we did before, we'll work it through and figure out the concentration of sodium hydroxide. So, you know, I'll use this data sheet right here. This is uh, for one of the data sets I'm not sending out, so, uh, you know, it's good for practice, right? Okay, so this is your, you know, you're going to do three trials, okay, you're going to do three trials, and at the end, you'll find an average, okay, so you work it out three times, take those final three numbers, take an average, and, you know, this isn't a statistics class. If your calculator's got a standard deviation function, use it. There's standard deviation calculators online. Just look it up, right? Just put the number in there, and it's going to be a small number probably, right? Because it's, it's just a measure of how far individual measurements are from the average, right? So a small standard deviation means you're precise, essentially, right? And the average, if you do three trials and they're all close, it's going to be close to the true value. Okay. Now, so let's look at this. So you add about 0.5 of a gram with all the decimal places to each trial, but we'll concentrate on this one. Okay, so then I do my titration, okay? And I start at 0.5, I don't quite start at zero, and I go down to 16.22, all right? So I start at 0.5 and go down to 16.22. Real simple, how much sodium hydroxide was added? It's real simple, 16.22 
minus 0.5 equals 15.72. 15.72 milliliters. Now, moles of KHP used. Now remember, there's a gram there, right? Okay, molecular weight, grams and moles. You did this before in the last titration. Moles equals grams over molecular weight. They also discussed this in the couple of pages before this in the pre-lab, right? So it's 0 0.5511 grams over, I think it was 204.2 grams per mole for KHP. Remember that one from before? Okay, so 0.5511 divided by 204.2 equals 2.7 Oh, well, let's do the whole thing, right? 2.6988 times 10 to the minus 3. And we'll trim it to four significant figures at the end, okay? Or whatever the limiting number of significant figures is. Actually, if we look at it, let's just do it right now, all right? Look at this data set. What's the limiting number of significant figures? You may be tempted to say 2, but when we do subtractions, Significant figures, <coughs> significant figures essentially don't apply. It's the, it's the uh, you just carry all the decimal places through. Okay, so if you want to read about that in the book, fine. But four significant figures is what it is. So what that be? One, two, three, four, two point six nine nine times ten to the minus three moles. All right. Okay. There we go. All right. Now moles of NaOH. Now be careful. All right. Be careful because we had that titration, right? So 1 NaOH, if you remember this from before, reacted with 1 KHP. Remember, that's a nickname to make NaKP, if you like, plus H2O. Okay, so it's a 1 to 1 situation. So moles NaOH balances moles of KHP when it changes color at the equivalence point, right? Now moles NaOH, concentration NaOH, times volume NaOH, right? That equals, oh, moles. This number, right? So it's the grams over molecular weight if you want to do it, which equals 2.699 times 10 to the minus three moles, okay? So <clears throat> what you can do, I don't want to do the whole thing for you, right? But you're going to solve for, oh, we can write this in here, two point 699 times 10 to the minus 3. Moles NaOH, well, it turns out <laughs> it's going to be the same number because it's 1 to 1, right? 2.699 times 10 to the minus 3. Now, if I go down here, I can actually simplify this, can't I? I don't have to do the whole math again like we did before. So if I want the concentration equals 2.699 times 10 to the minus 3 moles divided by the number of liters, right? Now careful, that's in milliliters, right? That's in milliliters, so I've got to turn it to liters. 0 0.01572 liters, okay? It has to be in liters. Figure it out, what do I get? divided by 0 0.01572, hopefully I did this right, yeah, 0 0.1717 moles per liter. Okay, so there you go folks, that's how you do part A. Okay, so remember when you do this, each trial gives you a value Take an average and a standard deviation, you're good for part one. Fair enough. Now, in part two, you have an unknown number, right? And you're going to have to fill out these two sheets, you know, and send them back to me as a, as a document, obviously, for grading. Okay? So, here, and, yeah, this is where the points are, so I'm not going to tell you so much on this one, right? So let you think a little bit. Okay? So you weigh out about a gram. Now, remember... That's a mixture, right? Okay, fair enough, right? So let's say you do a gram, all right? You work out the moles of sodium hydroxide just like you did before, right? Okay, because now, you know 
you know, take the average, but you know it's going to be around 0 0.1717, right? Okay. So you can work out the moles of sodium hydroxide. That equals the moles of KHP when you titrate. But remember, that KHP came from a mixture, right? Okay. So if you work out moles to grams, okay, say it was 0 0.500 grams. Just make it life easy, right? So you have a mixture of one gram, which you dissolve in water and do a titration. And then when you work it back, you work out the moles of sodium hydroxide, which equals the moles of KHP in the flask, right? And then you turn the moles of KHP in the grams of KHP to a 4.2 molecular weight. And there's actually 0.5 of a gram of KHP swimming around in there. And because it was a mixture of one gram, that means 0.5 was also whatever the dilutant was, right? The NaCl or something, right? Now, I made the math easy here because it's the part over the whole. So percent KHP equals the part, which is the KHP, right? 0 0.500 grams over the whole, the mixture, 1.00 grams, times 100 for a percent, 50 percent. Okay, and it looks like four significant figures is the one, right? Okay, if we, actually let's look at the masses, yeah, four significant figures, so the answers will have four sig figs. Okay, hopefully that makes sense, all right? Again, work out the percent KHP in the mixture three times, take an average standard deviation, and I'm essentially going to base essentially your entire grade on how good this part is here, okay. All right, the whole point of this experiment is to find out how much as a percent KHP is in the mixture. Easily done, okay, so let's just uh, recap, okay. In part A, we found out the concentration of the sodium hydroxide by titrating with pure, 100% pure, potassium hydrogen phthalate, KHP, just like the previous titration, right? So if you look back to the first part of the last experiment, it's exactly the same thing. We just do it three times, take an average and a standard deviation. This math down here is exactly what you did for the last one. So easy money, right? So the first part's easy. Easy money, of course, is what they call me on the street. Not really. <laughs> All right. Now, once you found the NaOH concentration in part one, you use that same sodium hydroxide. So it's just like the previous experiment. You kind of keep that burette just sitting there, right? And then you just swap out what's underneath. Underneath, you weigh out a gram or so, depending on the experiment, right? But you record the exact number around a gram, but you record all the digits, okay? You weigh out a gram of mixture. You then do the titration with sodium hydroxide of known concentration, right? So concentration, you know from part one, times the volume in liters you add from the burette equals the moles of sodium hydroxide. Boom, right? And then because it's a one-to-one -one titration, that's also the moles of KHP in the flask at, at, at equivalence, right? Hey, you got the moles of KHP, you know it's molecular weight, you can work out the grams of KHP swimming around in the flask, right? And it's gonna be smaller than the mass of the mixture unless it's 100% KHP. Sometimes they mess with us and give us pure KHP, right? And some students get 100%, but you obviously can't get over 100, right? So typically you'll get between 20 and 75 as a guess, right? I got the data sheet somewhere, all right? But hey, if you get 100, it's possible, right? Zero is not possible because that means there's nothing in there, <laughs> okay? All right, so, and then basically, what's 0.5 of one in terms of percent? Well, it's the part over the whole times 100 for a percent, right? Okay, do that three times, take an average and a standard deviation, and I'll pretty much grade that. Okay, all right, now, there are some questions at the end there. If you've looked at that um, titrations packet and you've looked at, uh, particularly that one with the magnesium hydroxide, right? Okay, these questions should be pretty straightforward, right? So we talked about making it up to the mark in the notes. This is this essentially, right? Making a solution, you can work out that answer. And this is a titration question. So it's, you know, be careful, do a slides and ladders because it's one with two. Again, look back at that magnesium hydroxide. They're both aqueous, right? So it'd be CV, CV, okay? But this is a two to one, so careful when you slide. And then a similar one here, again, okay? So these are harder examples of titration questions. Hopefully you're okay with that. All right, so wrap up. Due by the end of Tuesday, the 30th, I'll send you your assignment by email. Send back data pages plus questions, okay? So you have 
the two data pages. Part one, standardization. Part two, crunch the percent. And then the questions. Okay, so you're gonna send me three pages back. All right, send me three pages back. I'll grade those. It's actually very easy for me to grade this one because I'm just grading how good you are. <laughs> okay, so take your time. Okay, if it, you know, I've shown you how to do the standard, the standardization of NAOH. If you get some crazy number like 20 moles per liter, that makes no sense. It's gonna be somewhere between maybe 0.1 and 0.3, okay? And each of your titrations should be close. The most common error is not turning milliliters to liters, okay? All right, make sure you do that. Once you've got a nice number for your concentration of sodium hydroxide, move to part two, remembering that larger number you record for the mass initially is the mass of the mixture, right? Okay, and then you do your titration and work through to the moles of sodium hydroxide, same as the moles of KHP, and you can work out the mass of KHP in that one gram. Okay, that's a made up number. You also be somewhere between maybe 0.1 and 0.9 of a gram in one gram or something like that, okay? And then you know the percent, if it was 0.1, it'd be 10%. If it was 0.2, easy numbers, 20%, okay? But work out, you know, four significant figures, the answer, and we're good. As usual, any questions, you know, I put all these um, assignments up in the discussion section and the modules, right? So the idea is if you have a question, don't email me exactly, don't email me personally, right? Ask in the discussion. I'm hoping another student can help you for extra credit. If a student can't, I'll answer, okay? So um, I want any questions to be open to the group if that makes sense, okay? Because if one person has a question, another person usually has the same question. So it's better if we kind of discuss openly rather than privately, if that makes sense. Okay, so we're gonna stop there and I'll uh, see you guys on the next one.